and welcome back to this new section on linked list. So in this video, um, we're going to be first talking about linked list, uh, what it is. And in this whole section, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at uh, how basic uh, linked list data structure itself works. And then we're going to take a look at uh, real interview questions uh, that have been passed, uh, that have been asked in past uh, in interviews. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. So basically, linked list uh, is a data structure uh, which is also uh, which is also a type of a linear uh, data structure. It's a sequential linear data structure, and uh, in linked list, uh, data is arranged in unidirectional sequence, and uh, the sequence these sequences are bounded together by pointers. So linked list contains nodes, and each node, in its simplest format, has data and a reference to the next node in the sequence. So uh, reference, basically, that's also known as the link, as you can see uh, right here, points to the memory address for the next item in the list. And each node is responsible for holding data as well as the reference to the next pointer. So basically, this is how link uh, this is why this is known as linked list because uh, these nodes are connected and linked together in a list. Okay, so the first node uh, that's actually created in the list and uh, the uh, address, uh, the node uh, whose address is always known, is called the head. Okay, so this is going to be your starting location, and this is going to be the only node that you're going to know. Uh, for most of the cases in linked list, unless you modify the data structure to create like a tail node and stuff like that. Uh, most of in, in most of the time in general, you only uh, know about head and you actually iterate over uh, from head to next to uh, sequentially traverse uh, the linked list. Okay. And the last node uh, is the node that actually points to null. So uh, last node's reference always points to null, indicating the end of the collection or end of the list. Okay, so linked list is, uh, once again, one of the simplest and most commonly used data structure to build composite data structures. For example, uh, there are several data structures uh, that are built on the top of linked list, uh, such as lists, stacks, queues and uh, some implementations of hash table or dictionaries. The main benefit of using linked list over arrays is that its elements can be inserted and removed without reallocating or reorganizing the entire data structure. And uh, since the nodes are uh, basically known as a list and they only know the next memory address, uh, they can be located anywhere in the memory. So the allocation uh, for the memory does not have to be continuous. Okay, so memory does not have to be allocated continuously. That actually is the main advantage of using linked list. Uh, this makes linked list a dynamic data structure in nature, which can grow and shrink as needed without having to relocate the entire collection. So let's take a look at why linked list and why not arrays. So Imagine like, you know, if you had uh, this uh, memory of size n, so we are living in an era where the maximum memory size that we have is of size uh, nine, basically. And uh, these are nine blocks. Uh, so each memory address is represented by uh, nine blocks, uh, like, you know, each block basically, and total nine there. Now you have this array that array has like one, two, three. So the size of the array is three, okay? So when you allocate this array, you're gonna assign um, uh, these uh, one, two, three to these three blocks, one, two, three. Now, because this array, the data structure has to be contiguous. So you can actually reference these uh, addresses by using arrays index, okay? Now you had this situation where you, you created couple of more variables. So you created a variable a10 and another variable flag, which is true and it's a constant type. So it never changed. Uh, but now you wanna append another item into the array. Now you wanna append four, okay? So if you look at this, our memory is filled like, you know, for the fourth location. 
Now, in this case, what's going to happen is uh, there are two things. First, array size needs to be uh, needs to be increased. Okay, in modern programming languages, this is actually uh, hidden behind uh, these array lists or like you know modern array that's built in Swift. Um, uh, they actually hide the implementation detail for actual array relocation, uh, reallocation, uh, and rearrangement. But actually, what happens behind the scene is as soon as your array size grows uh, and it can no longer support another element uh, into its uh, uh, into its collection, then you create a new array, okay, at a new location, and then append all the items that you are, that are there already in the array along with the new item okay so as you can see this is a rather expensive operation because now you're blocking uh, four blocks of memory and then you're inserting so imagine like you want to append another one then you have you're gonna have to rely on like mapping another one now take the similar memory uh, like you know same memory and uh, work with the link list so you already have these two variables uh, inside the memory. Now you actually try to insert a link list. So link list, we have head that's pointing to two, then we have four, five, six, seven, and this is what we need to insert into the, into the memory. Now we can insert two, four, five, and because these are not contiguous in fashion, because they only know about the next, next element by their memory location, uh, two can point to four, and four can basically stay or, or be allocated anywhere. It just needs that memory address where it's actually been allocated. And four can point to five. Now, as you can see, the chain doesn't break. So five can point to six, despite like these two memory blocks are blocked by other variables, okay? So this actually helps you uh, build this notion of connected uh, connected items or elements and create a list uh, or a collection that is there, which can grow dynamically in size and you don't have to reallocate uh, basically the memory to uh, like, you know, once again, adjust its size and stuff like that. So that's the benefit where linked lists can grow as needed because every element is independent of each other. So all the elements are independent of each other. That actually uh, creates this dynamic behavior that we call as linked list that actually works for our benefit for some of the use cases. Now, don't get me wrong that like array is not useful. So let's take a look at what are the things that are there in array and what are the things that are there in linked list and how they compare each other, okay? so. Let's take a look at the linked list first. So linked list is basically an ordered collection connected to each other via memory pointers. Okay, as you can see that. Um, linked list is a sequential access uh, collection, meaning uh, that the beginning is only the head location. So that's the only location that you know. And in order to find any other element, you have to traverse the list one by one. So you sequentially travel and access collections. Okay, now um, another thing about linked list is new elements are added to the list can be stored at any location in the memory since they're connected by memory pointer. So they don't have to be contiguous in nature. Uh, insertions and deletions are fast operations because uh, all you need to do is like, you, know, you always insert at the head and when you need to delete something, you always, you don't have to readjust the entire collection. All you need to do is start pointing uh, the item that you want to delete, um, uh, the memory address, wherever the previous item to that deletion point was and point that pointer to the next item. So you skip the item that needs to be deleted and then anything else is gonna get stored in there or in that particular location is gonna be garbage collected, okay? Um, if insertion and deletion is, uh, it's a little bit tricky. So we're gonna actually take a look at how insertion and deletion actually works and uh, how they work in linked list. And we're gonna actually uh, build a code around it and uh, run some examples. So it's, it's gonna be clear if it's not clear right now. Now, linked list is a dynamic data structure where it grows at runtime. And the size of the linked list is variable as well because of that dynamic nature. And it can grow and shrink as needed. 
link list in the memory is stored on the heap section. All right, so let's take a look at the arrays now. So arrays are contiguous data structure, as we all know already. We have looked at it like, you know, and we have looked at several examples of it. Now, arrays support random access, meaning the elements can be accessed directly with their indexes, which is a huge benefit over linked lists because uh, now, you know, if you know the index of the address, you can have uh, uh, basically uh, that element stored at that location at a constant time or like, you know, of one time complexity. Accessing elements in the array is constant time operation, like we mentioned, and elements stored in the arrays are stored in consecutive member, uh, consecutive manner in the memory. So they always appear one after the other. And uh, insertion or, and deletion of uh, items takes more time because you have to shift, if you're deleting, you have to shift items uh, like, you know, to fill that gap that's been uh, made by the deletion of the item. And if you insert in the middle, then it actually creates that where you have to shift all the other items that, that can appear after that location where you wanna uh, insert a new item and then insert, make a block and then insert uh, that item over there. So those two are like, you know, rather complex uh, or like rather memory intensive operations. Memory allocations for the array is static and it's allocated at the time of its creation. So when you actually create the objects for the array, at that time, the memory is allocated. Now, each element in the array is independent. And it can be basically accessed via the index. Reallocating arrays to add elements beyond its initial size of the array is an expensive operation again, because in reallocate, uh, basically when your array gets full, you have to create a new array with a bigger size uh, of memory and then move all the items that you have in the previous array into that newly allocated array. So that's the rather memory intensive and expensive operation. And arrays memory is allocated in a stack section. All right. So those are uh, some of the differences. Uh, and you can see the benefits of having an array. Uh, whenever uh, these are beneficial because whenever you're actually in need of looking for a good data structure for uh, your problem uh, that you're trying to solve, uh, you have to determine which, uh, what kind of properties that you need uh, in order to work in your data structure. So if you need something that has faster access and uh, slower insertion and deletion time, you can always go with the array. And if you care more about faster insertion and faster deletion, but slower, uh, basically search or uh, slower access time, then you can go on the link list side. Now let's take a look at the node uh, more closely in the link list. So if you recall, we had these nodes that actually come, that actually makes up the link list. So the, um, these are like, you know, these are called nodes and the entire connected uh, graph or basically the connected uh, list uh, is called linked list. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, node a little bit uh, more like, you know, so nodes basically is the simplest form of data structure that your linked list has. Okay, it has two important information. Uh, one is data. Another one is pointer. Now data is the data that actually that particular node holds. So this is your element. Uh, it could be like, you know, a number, any object, anything that of that nature that you want to create. Now the pointer is always the point memory uh, location for the next node, okay? And if it's the last node, then it's gonna be basically pointing to no. But it's again, it's the pointer. It's a pointer pointing to the next location where we're gonna find the next element, okay? So hope uh, it is clear like, you know, what node is in linked list because uh, in lab, uh, we're gonna actually look into how uh, we can work with linked list. Before we work with linked list, we need to create nodes, okay? So in the next section, we can actually create actual linked list. Uh, first, we're gonna create the node and then we're gonna create the linked list and see all the other operations like insertion, deletion, searching, printing, and all those things, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.